Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines and to the Aurelia City. So in the last episode we wrapped up the last project on the other side of the river. The side of the city with all the suburbs, the airport, industry and all that. This means that the only part of the city where we need to build something is the original side with the downtown. And the downtown is exactly the part where we will return today. We will build a huge library, new tallest skyscrapers, sunken light rail station, tram station in a park and lots of new city blocks. So no time to waste, let's go. I started today's project by preparing this palette of buildings, simply just to take a look at all the structures, all the skyscrapers, the unique buildings that I haven't used yet in Aurelia, because most of these downtown projects, they all need to revolve around some landmark, some kind of interesting stuff. It either needs to be like a building or a station or park or something like that, but there needs to be that one central point that uh, is just going to be the main focus. Now for today's episode I really thought that it's going to be the new skyscrapers, but then I noticed that, that I still have this uh, French uh, library from Paris, and uh, by the way, it's an absolutely amazing looking building, as you can see, it's huge. It's going to fill a huge place in the city. I already uh, had it for a couple of months and I thought that I already had picked a place for it uh, somewhere completely else. But uh, when I was doing this, I kind of noticed that, uh, yeah, the hole inside the building kind of nicely fits uh, the canal. So it might be a good idea to actually have water running through the building and basically create this uh, edge of this tier of the canal with the library building itself. And, you know, have some nice opportunity to create some plazas in front of it, around it, because it has already these kinds of stairs. So I decided to, do, to go for that and eventually the library is going to, uh, going to become the center point for this uh, general area of the downtown, which is amazing. That's kind of what I needed in Aurelia. You know, it's just going to be something else than just uh, expansion of some high density stuff. So what exactly am I doing in here? I placed the library building, uh, by the way, it already comes with those stairs on three sides of it. And uh, I made it so that it's going to go roughly to the, to the uh, level of those second tiers of these canals, right? Now, that means that those stairs were not enough. I had to put more stairs in there. And uh, the procedural object gods were kind of smiling on me. And they usually do with these kinds of projects, which is kind of interesting. Uh, just like with the main train station, for example. But anyway, uh, the main point here is that uh, when I convert the library into procedural objects, obviously it's a huge model, so it has to have sub-buildings. And as you may know, if you convert something into procedural objects, then it only... It only converts the basic model, not the sub-buildings. And it just so happened that the basic structure for the library were the stairs with just a couple of a uh, couple of those uh, wooden boards on the top, which are going to be very important later. So this was absolutely amazing because I needed those stairs to be extracted from the main model so I can use them separately and create these uh, tiered... Uh, uh, tiered uh, levels in front of the library with all these different planters. By the way, these planters, the technique for creating these little planters somewhat randomly, this is actually something that I used such a long time ago uh, right next to the Arc Forge Industries building. If you remember, that's the building with the hologram in front of it, uh, in front of the main train station. So it's like episode four, three, something like that. Long, long time ago, but exactly this technique with these uh, planters that are dividing the stairs because the stairs are otherwise kind of huge and I need just something more interesting in there. Now, I also had to change my plans for this valley a bit. I, at first, I wanted to build it so that it's probably going to have some kind of residential buildings along its entire length until it reaches that second tier. So I also had these kinds of buildings right next to this uh, this tram uh, line that is just going up into that uh, into that uh, residential area up there. So I had to demolish that, and I just had to do some kind of changes, even with these procedural objects in here, with some some of these retaining walls. But uh, that's actually you know for the better because this is just going to allow me to do something much much more interesting. Now, by the way, so I did those stairs. 
I did the uh, the surfaces on them. They are black right now, but I'm later going to convert them into different colors. And in here, I'm just going to do some retaining walls because the canal valley is actually very low compared to the rest of the terrain. So that's, again, just like a nice opportunity, as I always say, to create some of these uh, vertical elements everywhere, everywhere around it. So elevators, obviously, all these kinds of tiered planters with decorations later. And it's also an opportunity to use these different networks or props for retaining walls. So for example, on the stairs, I'm using the Monaco uh, network wall. And on the sides of that uh, retaining wall near the elevators, I am using that uh, railway uh, concrete wall, which is looking really, really, really good for these kinds of uh, plazas, at least. Or, well, it's kind of looking good anywhere. Now, this is something that I also talked about, already mentioned it slightly. Uh, when I converted the library into procedural objects, it also uh, came with uh, some, uh, some of these boards. So I can actually use the texture of the boards from the library to create or extend this level, which is amazing. So I, for example, converted this part of that planter into some sort of an entrance from this side. I really wanted to create some kind of like a bridge in there so i just managed to jam it in here and it's just uh, again breaking some um, some area of the stairs which is nice the stairs are otherwise uh, too big and it's just you know something new in here so that's that's very very good it's trying to do these planters also on this retaining wall a bit uh, randomly not just like a continuous wall so it's a bit tiered and there are these like gaps and just teeth in there where it meets the new set of stairs so that's just introducing um, you know more and more possibilities into this area it's just going to be geometrically a bit more interesting let's say okay that's all i'm aiming for really with these kinds of big footprint uh, plazas or just buildings or projects or things like that so this uh, this building is going to be super important and it actually completely changed my plans for the rest of this area there are going to be the skyscrapers that we're going to build today but they are going to be further away from the library because even in real life the library is the tallest structure all around yeah sure in paris obviously there are like skyscrapers uh, just you know in all kinds of places but not really in front of the library or just in the immediate vicinity of the library so that was something that i also had to respect in aurelia and for a good reason because the library just needs to have its own like breathing space all around it it would look uh, just much less distinct if it had the skyscrapers uh, like right next to it now, also, the library is looking kind of natural, if you look at it. It has, obviously, that wooden board uh, surface. I'm not really sure if it's actually wood in real life. Maybe it is. But it also has those planters with some bushes in there. So it completely changed my idea about uh, the places going slightly further away from the downtown. And the library is eventually going to form some sort of an edge between the super high dense downtown and actually some kind of low density. So that's a project that I prepared for the next episode. Well, technically the next episode, 96, is gonna be the tram ride. Stay tuned for that. But 97 is going to do some kind of expansion of these areas. And uh, I'm going to create some very nice landscaping and low density edges. It's going to look really, really good, I promise. Okay, but anyway, back to, back to this, what I'm doing here. So the library, like I said, it kind of defined this entire area, which means that I also had a better picture uh, what to do with these infrastructure things over here. So I, for example, changed the layout of that main road, this main road that goes on the side, on the shorter side of the library, connects to that roundabout interchange. And it also needs to somehow go into the second highway and that old, very, very old interchange that used to be there, you know, since forever, really. Yeah, I built that really long time ago. Now, the plans were completely different back then, even for the trams that are running over that second highway. So I'm going to do lots of changes in the coming episodes. And I already changed slightly the geometry of that original interchange because the exit from it kind of needed to go slightly somewhere else. Now, I positioned these uh, skyscrapers in there. I'm mostly skipping that part in the time lapse because it's just a, such a mess because I was just uh, testing all kinds of different positions for the, for the buildings. I suppose that worth mentioning are only two structures in here. That's obviously the Citic Tower, 
the uh, the Shanghai building? I'm not exactly sure. I think it is. It lights up during the night, so that's going to be absolutely amazing. I think I included a shot uh, in the cinematics of that during the night, so that's going to be like the first time we're going to see Aurelia at night, at least partially, partially, because... Uh, like I said in some like very uh, very old episodes, I'm not really paying attention that much to how Aurelia looks like in night. So some buildings are just looking a bit uh, silly. Some streets uh, kind of lack lights and stuff. But certain shots into these skyscrapers onto the skyline, for example, those are actually looking really really good. Anyway, a uh, couple of buildings I placed uh, all around, some skyscrapers. There's that other uh, very nice looking skyscraper building, but I completely forgot its name. It's the one with uh, the tiers with, that's kind of get, getting thinner the, the higher it goes. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have that good uh, lot, so it's looking completely different in like very zoomed out shots. It's looking much darker in there. Now, these kinds of blocks that I'm doing here, I'm really just skipping through it because I was just placing some random skyscrapers and filling the, the footprints of those blocks with just some like generic office buildings or something much lower just to have concrete and steel absolutely everywhere because this is supposed to be the downtown. I was thinking that this place might be some kind of a, like a financial center of Aurelia or something like that. Anyway, this place right here is already becoming the sunken light rail station, which is going to turn out looking really, really good. Now, uh, I downloaded very, very recently for this episode that, uh, and I'm not really sure again, I think it's from Dresden, not sure, but it's, it's a German building, some kind of uh, office, government maybe, and uh, it's basically like a U-shaped uh, complex of structures, which is obviously like already calling for something to put inside of it, like a, like a station, sunken station perhaps, you know. And I also use on the other side of this road, in this little opening between these blocks, uh, this uh, hospital building. By the way, an interesting fact about this hospital building, I was already considering back in the day to use this, uh, use this uh, hospital building as the main train station. And it was actually kind of an interesting thing. I would have made the train station completely open. I would have only made the uh, the platforms uh, just uh, inside the city visible. They would not have the cover that they have now. And this building would be in front of it, obviously heavily changed with procedural objects. But the main shape kind of felt perfect for it. But I eventually decided to just use the Berlin main station for that and keep it uh, keep this one for some kind of different project. And finally, this is the day when I'm going to use it. So what I did there is I converted it into PO and I cut a hole right through the center of it so that it's basically going to have the light rail running through it and the building itself is going to just enclose that little open area that's going to be uh, that's going to be formed by the sunken light rail station, okay? And obviously it had the hey, it had the heliport on the top, and that's not just looking all that great. Also, because this is not really a tall building, it's surrounded by the skyscrapers, so I doubt that helicopters would go there. They would not have any reason. So I decided to cover that with uh, that little dome. The dome is. Uh, I have no idea what it is actually, but it's nice. So I converted it into PO and extracted only the dome and put it over that uh, heliport and also put some kind of uh, props on top of it, some kind of, uh, you know, ACs and whatnot to just make it more interesting. Now, this block, what I'm doing over here, I really wanted to just... Uh, because all of these blocks are kind of uh, not so detailed, not so nice. But I really wanted to have at least one block kind of done right. So this block in particular has those uh, office and commercial buildings forming that continuous line uh, on, the, on the street level. Then it's covered by grass and some kind of residential spires just going from it. So that's looking kind of okay. Now, finally, we are going to do that light rail station. As you can see, there is that temporary uh, loop inside the tunnel there, which is just, uh, you know, turning the light rail uh, vehicles around. But now they are going to go here into the station. This station is obviously going to be super important for all these skyscrapers. If people arrive into the main train station, for example, they can obviously just take uh, the light rail two stations into this one and uh, just go into all these buildings or maybe even the residential buildings around here. 
As you can see, this U-shaped uh, complex is so perfect for uh, doing some kind of sunken project in here. It just adds such more um, verticality into this area, which is just what we all want in Aurelia, of course. And uh, it's just perfect for it. I don't have any other better words. So let's just describe how I built it. So I'm using the light rail tracks, I'm using the good old uh, station obviously so that it has the platform and then I'm going to use these uh, brick commercial buildings that I, I have used nearby actually but in a project a long long time ago built and I'm just going to copy paste them a couple of times. I'm going to extract uh, or rather delete the features that I don't need from them with procedural objects. And I'm even going to uh, use them as some of these walls. As you can see, they are going to fit nicely. And they are obviously going to uh, provide uh, much needed uh, consistency in the area. So I'm even going to do them as retaining walls and uh, these kinds of edges of the road bridge, right? So yeah, that's just going to just going to blend the area now nicely together. I'm going to create these uh, very wide stairs that are going to go down into the pit of the station but don't worry I'm obviously going to provide uh, elevators as well absolutely everywhere through the area and later I'm also going to make it so that it's going to appear as if uh, there are some like underground entrances you know if people go just parallel to the tracks there are probably some kind of entrances into these buildings which makes sense you know it's probably some kind of a commercial center as well so it's going to have a direct access right from the light rail platforms now I was also playing with the colors uh, just like with the library I was also trying to do some different colors I was first trying uh, something like green or blue but uh, I don't know it was just kind of strange so I finally decided to just do this kind of grayish color which is kind of going to make it similar looking to the pavement but not quite there is a clear difference and that's all I really needed I didn't want to have the inside uh, dark so I didn't want to use gravel for example and certainly not like asphalt or something but uh, I actually wanted to have it very bright and uh, you know just uh, if you want it bright just do it white or you know some, somewhat white somewhat uh, somewhat grayish white so this is perfect. This is uh, kind of perfect and obviously the place is going to receive some more colors because later on the open spaces I'm going to put some uh, planters with flowers and everything so it's going to look fine. But then again we are in the downtown so it doesn't really make much sense that we're just going to turn a lot of these places completely green even though in front of the library that's uh, going to be exactly the case. But uh, this place is not really that close to the library just a couple of blocks away and it's very close to those skyscrapers to the financial heart of the city the office heart of the city so I just wanted to make it a bit more urban a bit more gray dirty maybe well not really dirty but you know probably what I what I mean so uh, mostly mostly finished with this stuff obviously the most satisfying part with all these different projects is to cover the surfaces right or to do the surfaces and cover all the all the stuff all the ugly stuff that's usually the result of procedural object uh, conversion so I also did a couple of buildings there because I didn't want to have this place that open it's uh, like I said after all very downtowny place and it, at the heart of the city so not not much uh, not much uh, open space in here but a couple of planters here and there a fountain you know some kind of details later I'm gonna add benches the elevators of course this elevator is actually gonna be functional by the way gonna do some for example uh, fences around the light rail tracks down below and uh, and street lights street lights everywhere so uh, these planters they are looking like uh, little ribs around the uh, the light rail and that's actually something that I'm going to use even in uh, in the following episodes because that's kind of an element that I really enjoyed doing now detailing involves obviously lots of trees as well because this place uh, even though it's highly like an urban area very dense it needs to have these kinds of planters here and there which are going to have trees and uh, I really do like using these more exotic colors for trees in these kinds of places because it just looks uh, better and yeah just like before it brings some more colors into the area now we are going to return uh, into the library place and do some more detailing in here so I already had some kind of street layouts going on in this place 
and I kind of respected that with the library but then again I wanted to do some changes so the library has this uh, like a circular road that goes around it but the circular road is then enclosed in these uh, more straight blocks right but these these kinds of uh, these kinds of transition transitions usually mean that there are going to be some places uh, some blocks uh, just going to naturally appear there that are just going to be too small for any kind of buildings right so for example that little ribbon there i just uh, covered it with uh, trees only which is actually going to be nice because that's just a natural green divider between the skyscrapers and the library area so that's something that uh, might be worth uh, you know exploring even in the future projects but uh, now one more thing that's needed and like I said I did that uh, circular road in this area which means that it's not exactly sticking to the side of the library building itself and also we need to overcome that elevation this side of the library is going to have this road which is going to go to the level of those wooden boards but it's obviously going uh, from much lower levels you know in front of these stairs right so we also need to do something about that. Now I decided to recycle this uh, statue. I'm not even sure where I used it before. I'm guessing that uh, I had to use it somewhere because I completely ran out of them anyway. And uh, I'm just creating this little square, almost square for it, uh, finishing the edges with these planters because that's just the most easiest thing to do here if you need to do these edges with the stairs. Obviously they are not really made for that because they are just the stairs. It would look kind of strange. If I did uh, some changes to like uh, the the nodes with the with procedural objects, it's best to just keep them straight and fill these edges with uh, these planters because I already established the shape of the planter in the area. So why not just use it to cover the hard to detail places? That's uh, highly logical. Now this uh, this kind of uh, ended up with this triangle on the side of uh, that uh, board level of the wooden level and just like before I had procedural object version of these of these boards so I was able to extend this place and this actually turned out looking really great and this is something that I like doing with I uh, when I download uh, structures from real life that are super distinct it might be a good idea to somehow change them at least with their surroundings so that it's not going to look like uh, the exact copy of the real life version right it's very difficult to do that with this library building of course because it's looking just so great uh, on its own but uh, this kind of a triangle on the side and the roads and the stairs and the colors and everything it uh, you know just adds something different something original I suppose so that the original building is just uh, gonna be a bit different and Aurelia is going to have its own library you know it's not just going to be like those uh, knockoff landmarks that you see sometimes in uh, different uh, cities in real life anyway this is now going to be the tram stop that I promised in the park and this is going to be the park right in front of the library so this is probably going to be the main entrance into the library from public transport even though on the other side of the library I'm gonna make a bus stop and that's actually going to have buses go into that transfer station that we built a couple of episodes back if you remember the one with the big bus terminal so that's also going to be a possibility for the residents to use that or even people arriving into Aurelia so it has lots of public transport options at the end of the day and even that sunken light rail station that we built might be easily used to just uh, allow people to go into the library if they for example arrive from the other side of the town and they don't want to switch because that light rail by the way I think uh, yeah that is the same light rail that goes all the way to the university actually so that's the university light rail and all those big suburbs past the university so lots of people can easily just go into this area by the light rail without even needing to switch to any different line so I just I just uh, thought about it I didn't really plan it that way to be completely honest but uh, it's a nice consequence now that I think of it because it makes sense that the library should be nicely accessible by the students of the universities 
Now we are going to do the connections for the sunken station. And uh, as you could have seen, I also put some of these pedestrian paths just through all these building blocks so that people from all around, uh, basically the station is just going to radiate paths into all directions. So people from all around can just gather into that sunken station. And it's actually going to be super busy, which is nice. That's what I was aiming for. So before and after transitions, not really like a huge footprint filled today, but uh, you know, on the other hand, we did lots of detailing with those stairs in front of the library or all the surfaces around it really. And the sunken station that is right in the middle of this, uh, of this big building district. Now I have to admit that I was putting here some buildings that I later got rid of, mostly on the edges of this area because I really struggled to do these kinds of uh, different blocks. I eventually got inspired a bit by real life uh, blocks of buildings near this library in Paris. And I was just trying to put there something similar looking in terms of geometry. And I think that actually even that uh, building with the with the commercial buildings in the line with the grass on top of them and the spires going from them, that's actually also inspired by the real life surroundings of this library. So uh, I, I was actually kind of at, uh, at a dead end with these blocks. So I really needed some inspiration for this expansion. I'm usually not having problems with inspiration or ideas for these kinds of projects, like all these retaining walls and infrastructure and whatever. But uh, when it comes to just expanding the city with some just random blocks of buildings, I really don't know how to approach that. So I definitely took some inspiration from real life in there and obviously adapted it to the buildings that I have at my disposal in, in the game. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all for today's episode. Thank you for watching it. Stay tuned for the tram ride next episode next week even. And uh, that's going to be all. Oh, yeah. And by the way, of course, if you like today's episode and you want to help it help the channel, then you can do the usual put the thumbs up, write some comments, subscribe if you're new here. And you can also become a channel member if you want to directly support the channel. Big thanks to all the channel supporters that we currently have. I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys again. Thank you and goodbye.